Hello you guys, what is up? If you guys are watching this, it's because you just bought my video course. And first and foremost, thank you so much for buying this course. This has been a very large dream of mine for a very long time, and we are finally doing it. And sit back, relax, take some notes, and I want this video to feel like a very long form and very informative YouTube video. A little backstory about me, I am a slime creator. I create, which is a very rare thing to say out loud because what even does that mean? And of course I intend to expand within my space and test out some other things throughout the years, but I have built a very large following around the concept and the making of slime. That is just crazy in my opinion and I have wanted to create this course for a while because there are so many things I have learned simply from trial and error. And because of that, I'm able to make this video course for you guys. Because slime is simply a very new and unknown territory, especially in how developed it's become over the years, I'm truly just creating my own opportunities at this point. I'm going to go over a bunch of different topics in this course. These lessons were listed in the course description of this um, online video course when you purchased it. Um, I'm going to begin with how exactly I think that you should choose your niche, um, especially within the slime world. And I'm going to use one of my friends as an example here because she truly has it is such a spot for herself. So she is Retro Slime Company and she truly is such a prime example of someone that saw the slime world, but then also saw how there wasn't anyone with such theme as a retro slime shop. And that is so important to find a niche that is popular, exciting, has hints of viral, so things that are already being talked about, you know, certain topics, um, but trying to make that, for one, your own, and second of all, try to keep with, you wanna try to keep it trendy, but also yourself. And then there's also, you know, there's Kawaii Slime Company who has all things kawaii, and it's just like the coolest thing. So there's always a space for you. Um, for me, is it, as for an example, for me, my slime shop is Slime by Nicole Jacqueline. I am Nicole Jacqueline. Nicole Jacqueline is a YouTuber. Nicole Jacqueline is my TikTok. Slime by Nicole Jacqueline is my slime shop. Um, and then I also have a personal brand as well, but it's all Nicole Jacqueline. And the one common denominator of all of these things in my businesses are me. Like I am the common denominator. I am what makes it different. And I am always, I have always been the number one thing in my videos. I, I'm on camera, I'm behind the scenes, I'm showing the process. I have made a point to integrate myself into the process. And I have done this for multiple reasons, but first and foremost, it is so important, in my opinion, for the buyer to know who you are. I think it gives them such a unique, way to connect with you and obviously you don't have to go this route you can do something else that is completely different i'm just offering my example as the one that i follow obviously um but this has worked for me really well and when people get the opportunity to connect with you on a personal basis it just makes the experience way more fun and think about it when you buy from a homemade slime shop or when you buy from a homemade something a homemade lotion a homemade candle when it's very personal and you get the opportunity to connect with that person on a like one on a one on one experience it really makes it so much more special and for me i honestly connect so much more when i am able to know who the person is, have some sort of personal question to them, if it's some sort of like personal connection, and you don't have to get this personal, but for me, I like enjoy doing that kind of connecting. So if I ever express like anxiety or just like a real life issue with my followers and whatever it might be, they're gonna be like, oh my gosh, like that's literally how I feel. And it makes them remember something about you that isn't just your product or doesn't or isn't just your video that you're creating for them. It just is a much, it's just a really cool way to show your viewers and your followers and your buyers and whoever it is that you're a real person. And people love 
to be reminded of that. Even if you think it's overdone, trust me, it's not done enough. Like I literally love when I, people that I follow are being real and just raw and then they're like talking about how a product has changed them. And for me, slime has really been that. It's so therapeutic for me. And I have expressed multiple times in my videos how slime is just such a anxiety relieving, stress relieving thing. It kind of ties into this next point, which is how to build a brand for your business. Now, this is a really large topic because your brand is everything about you, what you say, what you wear, what you look like. It is literally you and everyone on or offline has a brand, if you will. And with my offline friends, I always joke and I say, oh my gosh, like your brand is this. It's just like breaking it down more like their brand, your brand is just like things about you that people like remember about you, things that people associate with you, items, ideas, concepts, kind of the same thing, but just those things that connect with you to you, which truly is like the overall picture of what your brand should encompass. And I truly believe um, these are things that you're going to learn over time. Please don't um, do this, which can be really hard for some people is they will spend months, like literally months, maybe even if in a year, building their website, building their brand and doing so many things that truly you need to just be testing them live and in action. So I am a very big believer in launch fast and adapt faster because if you waste a lot of time trying to learn everything, trying to conceptualize everything about anything that you're building, the website, how, how it works, how to make orders, how to fulfill orders, all of these things, I believe are best learned if you just launch and figure them out at your own pace. Of course, you know, you know, maybe you could, maybe you could, you know, have some sort of on your website to say, okay, processing time is going to be for like an extended period of time to give you enough wiggle room. There's ways to go about it. So building your brand, you know, the colors of your brand, um, it really comes down to you know, what do you think best aligns with you? What are some things that you want to, in, yeah, that you want to spark in people? Uh, for example, for me, I've always used like very neon colors and this is something that I adapted as time went on. And I'm not saying like I was always wearing like bright neon and like everything was so neon, but whenever I use any kind of graphic design elements or even my backdrops or whatever, those little things that just add like the color of your jar, the color of your packaging, how the package is packaged. So like the tissue paper, the add-ins, like is there a color, some sort of like color concept going on? These are little things that overall will add to the buyer's experience and are going to create that, again, that connection. Someone's going to think, it's going to make someone feel some type of way. Now, I'm being a little bit vague here because building a brand is just such a large thing. But for the most part, it just depends on so many things. And I do want to create a, I do want to create a second video course, just breaking down building a brand. And I will do a whole course on that in the future. And next up, how to build a website. Do you use Etsy or Shopify or Wix or GoDaddy or what else are there out there? There are so many platforms. There are so many options. I only have experience with Etsy, Shopify, and a little bit of Wix. I've never used Wix as a selling platform, but I've heard it's great. Uh, Etsy I did used to use and I have to say, if you have a following online already, somewhere something and there's interest in your products like you're confident that you could stand on your own and have traffic going to your website without any external sources for the most part um meaning like some sort of like search engine on etsy <laughs> you can stand alone with your url you have traffic to drive to your store which Congratulations, that's incredible. Uh, if you are that person, I would think Shopify would be good for you. However, I don't think it would be a bad idea to give 
Etsy a run because Etsy to me has such a low risk, high return. You really can start Essentially, to me, Etsy is like a Google search engine, but just for people that want to buy things. And people go on Etsy to buy things for the most part. Like, I don't go on Etsy just to like search things. Like, I'm searching odds and ends things, and I'm trying to find a unique product. And this is also a good example of why you'd want your slime business to be different. Slime is a very, I wouldn't say it's very saturated, but it's definitely a saturated industry. Everyone does it now, everyone has a slime shop, everyone's slime is the best slime. So it's important to diversify yourself, create slime that plays into someone else's interest. Like pick a demographic, pick a topic. There can be so many options out there. You can even Google search on Google <laughs> and search like the popular trends or topics or peaking interests and find a way that you can play into it. I think the retro aspect is a great thing. I think the kawaii aspect is a great thing. Also like a princess, like a princess, like a based off of the Disney princesses, but like minus the Disney part. So it's not like a trademark issue, but there's always a way to kind of keep creating, especially as a slime shop in 2021, unless you have some sort of following elsewhere where there would be like an interest in buying your product. I definitely think Etsy is a great platform to use. It's easy to understand. It is not expensive. It's a great inexpensive platform. And I have so many friends that use Etsy and Shopify even because Etsy is such a great place where anyone who's just trying to find anything will come across your storefront. And I think that is just a great deal. Like why wouldn't you do it? This next topic is where to source supplies from. Breaking down wholesale buying versus Amazon or slash third party suppliers, which I would consider that to be someone like me who buys wholesale and then sells the supplies in her own storefront because why not, right? But let's go back to the beginning. So where to source supplies? Now, if you are, once again, trying to source a large amount of product, a website like Alibaba or AliExpress or just like a giant you know, international hub of suppliers and finding a good supplier on there. It also gives you a little background on the company, which is really cool. And there's just a whole lot of information on that, on that website, which I think is great if you have, if you have a need for a lot of supplies, which could be you 100%. It could be you. Maybe you're watching this and you already have a following. You already have a slime shop and you want to better your shop. You want to find, you know, that capacity. However, most of you guys probably don't have a slime shop right now and you want to begin one. So a great place for you guys to go for cheap and smaller amounts of supplies because, you know, why would you invest so much into supplies that you don't even have a sale for yet? Which, by the way, don't do that. Just wait until you absolutely need to buy at like a wholesale level, which trust me, you'll know when the day comes but you do it through someone like me who sells them, who buys wholesale herself, but then also sells them in smaller increments for someone else to purchase, which is so, so cool. And I love that I can do that. Um, but also Amazon is great because Amazon, people that people that usually sell on Amazon actually are people, it's, it's like the same thing for me because I'm buying wholesale, but then putting it in my store. People out there have Amazon FBA program set up and they, buy from wholesalers and they sell it on Amazon, which is so cool, but you're just buying through them at a more discounted price. And there is so many options on Amazon for like all niches, which is so cool. <laughs> How to make and print your own logos and your own labels, the whole, the whole thing. So I have experience using Sticker Mule and online labels. So Sticker Mule is great because you can just submit your graphic online and they will create it your they will create it for you they will literally make it beautiful they'll print it for you and you'll get it in a nice little packaged box which i do love and honestly it's a great option and i use that still for my i use that as of now for my logos because the type of paper that they use you can get a great you can get an option on there where you can use the sticker paper that does not um, transfer ink which is great so you can essentially get slime on it without having to worry about that happening then as far as making your logo goes now this is one of those things that 
really goes back to how you're going to brand your business, how you're going to market yourself, just different things about you that make you you. Now, making your logo, you can do this in a lot of different ways. You can learn how to design your own logo, which more power to you. Like I literally think it is so cool that people can do it themselves. Um, but there are so many awesome ways to find graphic designers out there. Like for example, um, Fi Fiverr, it's F-I-V-E-E-R. Fiverr is a place where you can research and find people that are just skilled and trained and that will understand your vision and what kind of graphic you want. It's a great resource and I highly recommend. And then for your labels, I use onlinelabels.com, which is a great resource for making labels and even logos like printing and making your labels as you go is a great option. And it's a very user friendly um, platform. It's onlinelabels.com, but then also for the label, you can design your labels in the software, which is onlinelabels.com slash maestro. And it's a very awesome platform. It's a great platform and there are so many options for the sticker size, the sticker design, if you want it to be clear or paper or like whatever the material you want it to be when you print it, there's all those options and you can even print, you can even buy from their website and buy the exact paper that you want for your labels and then put that in your printer at home and then you can take that exact template that's on your um, labels you get in the mail and you can put that label number into the search bar and the exact size paper or whatever it is that you need to print or design on and it instantly pulls it up for you and it's a very great process like I just think it's so awesome and it's just like easy as that like boom done it's printed very easy to follow I've used this for literally years now next up marketing 101 baby how to promote your business how to drive sales through social selling and secret tactics to drive sales now i fully believe in using social media to your advantage and i'm sorry to tell you this but i don't have any tips for someone outside of using google ads or facebook ads which is a great thing i don't have much knowledge in that department but if you cannot use Instagram or TikTok or YouTube or whatever it is, which I have heard before. Um, Facebook ads, um, Google ads are great. Um, I'm sure there are Facebook groups out there. Uh, I don't have much, you know, into that, which is why I stated that I am in my course guide. I shared how to drive sales through social selling because that is what I do. <laughs> I fully use all of the platforms. I use TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube. Because I am the face of my brand, creating videos on YouTube where I'm a part of it, I am immersing myself in the slime making process, whether it's my restock with me videos. I have literally shown my viewers and my buyers like how I'm making the slime. It's such a process and it is so, I think it is so undersaid how important it is to show your viewers that process because it's exciting, it gives them an attachment, they literally saw you make it and it's like whenever I watch those kind of um, follow me along like very immersed kind of videos I want to go buy from whatever I was just watching like I watched all of these like soap making videos these like candle making videos and I'm like oh, I want to buy it now because like you feel so connected to it it's so weird but there is something to it so literally just the coolest part about this is most of us have a phone of some sort and that phone of some sort has the ability to record and upload and you know use these apps like TikTok, Instagram, YouTube and post content which is so great and I don't believe it is like crucial that you have to have the top gear. I have over the years I have obviously chose to do that because you know I wanted to upgrade my gear but I think it is more important to have exciting content than have like a lower quality camera because people want to watch for the content and if the video is like kind of rough but you have a loyal fan base and regardless like if your video is good like people will watch it and I think a lot of us get hung up on you know oh I don't have the right camera I don't have the right gear I can't afford this I can't buy this like 
honestly, find like the best lighting in your house, the best window, whatever it is, and just put your camera up in front of it. Like best investment you'll ever make is getting one of those Amazon like $12 tripods that comes with a little re remote control even, and it goes in all different directions and you can put your phone on it, record your videos. It is like the best thing ever. And the biggest thing here is just to create content at a low price point, right? Like we don't want to spend a million dollars on, on like, Gear because we're just starting out, you know? I wanna get more into the tips and tricks on like urgency and tactics on making sales as we go on. So keep on listening. How to create product listings. Ooh, very exciting. So once again, we're in this course, I wanted this to be like a very basic level course because this course is meant for somebody that is just starting out, you know? really want some tips and tricks or even someone that's just new to the scene or if you want to just like keep learning like I just think that's so great like it's always good to open yourself up to more knowledge and I'm just very proud of you. But for me the coolest part ever is I can just use this little phone right here to create and take product listings. Now here's how I do it. So I usually try to find some sort of like blank wall of some sort but honestly there are tools where you don't even have to worry about it so if your product is in the middle of like <laughs> a mess for lack of better words and there's just stuff behind it and it's not clean and whatever it is okay but just make sure that i'm gonna use my giant coffee as an example just make sure that your product is in a good lighting. Like whatever is behind it doesn't matter. Make sure that your main product has a good lighting situation going on because then you can actually um, love this. You can actually get the app called Canva or PicMonkey. I have used PicMonkey for years and I'm still a big, I just love PicMonkey so much. I've used it for thumbnails for literally years. So I, I know how to use it so well that I know how to use like the wrong tools to create better effects on things. Like I have learned how to use, how to do certain things with like weird tools. So there's like so much knowledge in that. The point is like, these are editing apps that are literally not Photoshop. I don't know how to use Photoshop. I think it is actually just way too, it's way too much. <laughs> Canva or PicMonkey, both are great options and both have an option to remove the background, which we love this. And you can even add like a drop shadow to it. Once again, these are all so easy to understand and it's nothing compared to Photoshop. Like I tried Photoshop, I tried to learn it. I, it's just like incomprehensible. Probably not a word, but like it's just a lot. <laughs> And what I do usually is I try to find like a large graphic, a large like background, a large canvas of some sort. I try to like stretch the image as large as I can and, you know, lighten it up a little bit, add some saturation, like, you know, do some like nice things to it real quick. Make it look pretty. And the best part is after you've removed that background, it does it literally automatically. Usually it's pretty spot on, but if it's not, you can like clean it up a little bit around the edges, which is muy bien. I truly just like do that for my listings like it's so easy and for the most part that's what I do all the time and if I don't I use my other camera but I'm still going to use Canva and PicMonkey like great options and just like all around not scary to use and by the way if you want to leave your backgrounds messy go for it but I'm just saying like it makes it look 10 times more professional when it is like that clean cut background like the main focus is just truly on the products which we love and upload it to your website whether it's Etsy or Shopify whatever it might be and now we're talking about and that brings us to SEO tagging. So what that basically means is search engine optimization. And you want to obviously put your product in the front of people that want to buy it, right? What I usually do is I pretend I'm the buyer and I ask myself, and I'm sure, by the way, there are plugins out there where you can literally find like the most searched tags, which are very interesting usually. But what I do is I pretend that I'm the buyer. So when I'm going on Google or Etsy or whatever it is, I'm like, okay, what would I type in? And usually it's not wordy. You're kind of just typing in like a super choppy sentence. There isn't any connecting words. There isn't anything like 
um, make a or whatever. There's nothing of that sort. It's more of like butter slime, crunchy slime, or pink butter slime, or pink clay slime. Different like alternatives. And you want to remember like your buyers might not understand like the types of slimes because there's so many of them. So you have to think about, okay, what might they be searching for? Like they might think like a fluffy slime is a cloud slime. So you want to tag all of those things too, because visually from like a mom perspective, like moms or like anyone, literally anyone from any perspective could be going on Etsy and not understanding, but seeing what they have seen on like Instagram or whatever it might be from whatever their child plays with or whatever you play with. It could be a lot of things, obviously. Okay. And you want to just really get gritty with it. Type in all the slime types, type in slime making, DIY slime, like Pretend you are the buyer. You want to buy something. What are you searching for? But also when you are typing, when you were typing on Etsy and if you just start typing like butter slime, there's going to be like a million options that pop up and you're going to be like, okay, so this tells you that other people are searching for these topics. Screenshot that, go to your SEO and type all those in because it's going to naturally um, associate whatever is being searched for with your product and this is just so good to do I do this with everything I do YouTube Instagram whatever or YouTube and Shopify or Etsy just really try to make sure that you are optimizing where it will be placed and if I should do and once again I don't mean to kind of brush through that but there are so many things that I could go into depth about um, like the perfect listing like all of these different things and I would love to create um, a more extensive video on each which I would love to create a more extensive course on each of these individual topics like each of these chapters are gonna get their own course because they are truly such a deep dive topics and I would love to expand more on them. Um, but yes, there's so much you get into here, but this is pretty, a pretty good, I think, a basic. Um, okay, next up, the importance of urgency, scarcity in your business. So think about it like this. Do you guys remember when Kylie Jenner first released her lip glosses? and you couldn't get your hands on them. Speaking of scarcity, I have to go buy all of these slimes right now. <gasps> this is why it is a good business model because you need to, oh my gosh, I'm buying all of them. Because the scarcity, like, and I am the reason why it is successful. And I need to get better about doing that because it truly makes it 10 times more exciting. And everyone's like, rushing so they're gonna buy more naturally because oh I have to get it like everyone wants it I want to find out why it's so exciting and like that is just like the best this is just the fact that this is happening right now like while I'm filming they're selling out left and right you guys they're literally selling out so fast okay I definitely want that one I'm gonna pass out <laughs> This is your example as to why you should do this. That was a great example as to why you should create urgency. I just purchased so many things from somebody else. Um, obviously I am buying it because it's like video content on video content for TikTok, YouTube, like multiple YouTube videos. Uh, so that's why I do that. But it was so exciting. Like that process is exciting and like set your alarms. That's like a Christmas morning feeling for me. And it's a great, great business tactic. Oh, sold out, but you must come back at this time because if you're always in stock, there's no urgency. And I have such a love hate with this topic because I'm like, well, if I'm always sold out, like, who would buy like then they can't buy from me you know when they want to but it's like it really isn't about when how it is less about how your buyers want to buy if they want to buy from you they will literally mark their calendars maybe you won't have those like random people buy from you but you will like develop such a consistency to your schedule and i think it's such a good 
business model. Like a no brainer, right? But are you doing the things that are going to excite your viewers, keep them in tune? I'm talking like in your bios, you need to be writing like restock this time, this date, be there. Setting countdowns, like literally making sure people are sitting on your website waiting for you to publish because that right there is like the way. You need to make sure there is an urgency to it. Now that I have properly explained the importance of urgency as literally the like you guys you just saw we have what what just happened like i just spent like you guys didn't see this i placed two orders <laughs> obviously my reasons for buying are different than everybody else's but still like because i knew i had less time it was less time it kind of sounds like kind of bad but it's just like the reality of it you have less time to think if you're just like oh my gosh oh my gosh like sure 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 add 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 to my cart Bye. And then you're like, what did I just do? <laughs> it's all that bad. But it's like, guys, we all do it. That's just the reality of it. And this is truly inspiring me to reinstate that urgency. Um, the reason I hadn't was just because I was like, well, I want everyone to be able to buy. And it's like, that's true. And even um, Snoop's Lines, for example, she has her always available collection. And for me, that could be my bestseller. So like Oreo, Twinkie. Sour Patch Bread, Unicorn Pop Tarts, Birthday Cake. Uh, what else do I have for bestseller? Oh, Boba, Peppermint Twist, Butter. Like these slimes that are going to be always in stock. But then you also have, okay, like every single whatever the day, the time is, restock. Like set your times, we're coming, we're doing it up. That is like such a good way to run it. And I just think it's just like, I'm inspired. I'm truly inspired maintaining your business. So, you know, in the course guide I wrote, model for the long run, importance of building a social media brand. Now, maybe you don't have any interest in like creating a social media brand, but I think it's important to definitely play into it. You have all of these tools in front of you that could be helping you. I think it makes you so smart and just with it to play into the trends how can you use this app to help you? And there are so many things you can do. I think it's important to remind yourself that yes, there are some guidelines to follow for certain things like SEO tagging or, you know, some helpful tips for product listings. But as far as how you market your business, how you decide to do that is truly up to you. Like you are the one creating the path here. So don't limit yourself to one idea. And if, I need you guys to remember how important this is that I'm about to say. Please remember how important it is that if it's not being done, that doesn't mean it's not a good idea. It could just mean that no one's done it yet. So try it out, see if it works and run with it because that's how good ideas are born. And I use TikTok to run my, sl my slime shop all the time. There's so many things you can do and it's like the best. If you have to choose one app, I say do TikTok as like a business marketing strategy and then link to your Instagram and your YouTube channel, whatever you decide to focus on. But I like to do them all because it just creates like a constant um, buzz. But also if you're trying to create a bigger brand out of this and for me, I my goal is not to be known as a business owner, but of course I want to create that as like a consistent stream of income, a consistent business for me. Um, but I want to end, I want to end up as an entertainer in the slime, like a, a slime entertainer or a lifestyle creator. I want to be, I want to be a creator. I love to be behind the, I love to be in front of the camera. I love to do all this stuff. I think it's so much fun. And I know that is me. So how I am maintaining my business for the long run is I'm hiring editors for my YouTube videos. I am sourcing out things that could be sourced out. Personally, I like to still make and package my slime. And because I know that's how I am, I delegated those tasks to other people. And um, as of right now, I just pretty much do everything myself, but the 
editing is a huge lift off. And yes, I have to, you know, pre-film and do all these things, but then it makes me more able to be on my feet, creating and driving sales for my slime shop, creating and driving awareness about my brand and just continuing to build my brand. Now, obviously as you're getting started, there isn't like a fund to just outsource everything. This is something that I have done now that I have built my business. And this would be a good thing for you guys. Once you have built it to a point where you can start to hire help, whatever that looks like, if it means hiring someone to package, which I did before, I've had staff in the past and I, I did, I really did enjoy it, but I just found out that because I am a content creator, I like to be doing it because then as I'm doing it, video ideas pop up for TikTok or YouTube or Instagram pictures or content creating, like managing my social media is going hand in hand with running my business. And that is how my business model looks. Might not be how yours looks, but it's how mine looks. And I love how I built it that way. I really do enjoy it. And because I built it this way, because I built my brand this way, it means that whatever I do and create, people tie it back to me and not a product, which I am very proud of, but that doesn't mean you have to do that. There are so many people that have like loosely tied to their brand and they're so successful still, but this is just really what works for me. And I empower all of you guys to do what is best for you with building your slime shop, with building your brands. It, it comes down to what will work best for you. You have to be real with yourself and look at yourself in the mirror and ask yourself, can I maintain this for the long run? Is all that I'm trying to hold myself accountable for actually maintainable? Being honest with yourself, being open and real with yourself at the beginning is much easier than having to change everything because what you thought you could do, you really can't. Just being real with yourself because it's not, I think it can be taken as like a bad thing for, you know, not being able to do it all yourself or not being able to do what you thought you could do. And it's like, that's okay. Like we all have our strengths. For me, I know that I'm really good at managing my business in terms of the creation standpoint. I love to create um, and for me creating ties into packaging orders and um, making TikToks because it is so involved and I think it's just like best that way. Yes, I might be a little bit more tired, <laughs> but it's like for me, that's how it works. And I have found function my best when I hire people to edit my stuff, even though I can do it myself and I, I am good at it, but it's like, you have to be real with yourself and ask yourself, what exactly can I do for the long run? Um, yes, <laughs> kind of a wordy situation going on here in the little video course. I really hope this was a helpful video for you guys, a helpful course for you. If you have any further questions, please email me. And as far as creating individual courses goes, really breaking down different, like, if I did a video on how, how to build a brand, I would do a video course on how to build a brand. I would literally take a concept and show you guys the whole process from idea to logo to how do ideas that I would package that product in, the whole thing. And then as well as you know, just really trying to give you guys a good breakdown of all of that. But I hope this gave you guys some base, some basic understanding of how to start a slime shop. I'm planning on doing a really like a dumbed down, like a really like basic version of this for YouTube. And I'm posting that video very soon on my channel. But I wanted this to be just a really chatty, video course about how to start a slime shop because there's so much that goes into it and there's nowhere to look and i hate that because you guys got something out of this course and you are inspired to start your own slime shops the biggest advice i can give you out of all the information i just shared with you guys is to just start just do it and figure it out as you're going, you know, reference these topics as you go on in your journey. Um, but don't get too bogged down with the little things because the little things are not the big things. <laughs> you guys, I will see you guys in my next video course if you do choose to purchase one. 
I hope this was helpful to you in some way or shape or form. And I'll see you guys very soon on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. Y'all know I'm always on something. And I'll see you guys very soon. Thank you for watching. And yes, my first video course. I'm signing out. Bye.